If you're thinking about RV life, even if it's only on weekends, you really need to have the right tools with you. So let me show you what I carry. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. And I'm Paul, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And I am super excited right now because we're finally going to be doing the video that everybody's been asking for. So if you've been following us for a while, you know we're full-time RVers. We've been on the road three years and, and a few things have happened that have required tools such as... Various uh, plumbing leaks and uh, I just recently had to do some electrical repair under the belly and the island collapsed. Who can forget that? Oh my gosh, the window trim fell off. We also had to do a uh, very intense installation of the security cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people are always asking, what tools, what tools? Well, so Paul has probably more tools than you would want maybe but he has he's ready for everything well not everything but I'm I try to be prepared and and uh, I generally have the right tool for the job I just did a the window repair and I had everything I needed even down to the hardware I I even keep a, a small supply of, of screws and nuts that uh, so that I don't have to run to the hardware store every time I every time I have to do something well, I started saying this so much that I consciously stopped saying it on camera, and that was, Paul saves the day. It seems like no matter where we are, and you know, if you're camping, you could be, you know, 40 miles away from a hardware store or, or more. And Paul saves the day with his tools, so we are gonna show you everything he has, and also with your know-how, not just the tools, you know how to use well, them. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I spent my, my whole life, I grew up in an auto repair garage that my dad owned, and, and so I learned how to fix things at a very early age, and it has served me well. Uh, if you have that skill set, it's great. And and if you don't, you know, if you haven't done, if you didn't have the kind of life that I did with uh, with tools in your hands most of the time, um, you can still fix things. I mean, just use common sense and you know, do your best not to break things. But. <laughs> Just know that that's still going to happen. But if it was, if it's broken to begin with, this is the this is the rule that that uh, I live by. If it's already broken, you're not going to make it worse. Well, well, hopefully not. And the thing is, campgrounds are friendly places. So if you do find yourself, you know, just completely puzzled or lost or whatever, you know, reach out to your neighbors and see if they can help you. Yeah, I mean, I've I've done that for people, for neighbors, camping neighbors more than a few times where I see that they're working on it and I'll just stop by and, and ask if they need any help. This is my go-to tool. I use this probably more than anything else and um, it is just a an electric impact driver. I mostly use it with the quarter inch bit that's what that's what's on it right now and I just swap out sockets depending on what I'm working on. I had to take the belly down recently and the, all the screws are 3 8 heads so I put my 3-8 socket on it and, and I can have that all the screws out in, in a matter of minutes with this as opposed to, well, it would still be minutes, but it would be a lot more minutes if I was doing it manually. So it just saved, it's a real time saver and, and you do not want to be without an impact. An impact it will, will provide usually a little more torque than, the, than a drill. I could get by with just a drill, but uh, that's a little more compact, it's a little smaller, gets in tighter spaces than, than my drill motor does. So this is why I carry the impact and a drill motor. You see how much smaller the impact is? And sometimes you need that, that compact uh, size to get into certain places. But I can't, I guess I, I can drill with this. I, I do have bits that will fit into this drive, so I could drill with this but I don't very often. In fact, I can't remember when I ever have done that. So when I need to drill, I get this thing out. This is a Ryobi, and so you can set the amount of torque you want applied. If you're putting screws in and you don't wanna, you don't wanna strip a piece of wood or something, you could actually use this for that. That's when this would come in handy. This just applies massive torque and, and if you're not careful you'll strip screws especially wood screws or metal screws with it. I have two toolboxes that are my main go-to boxes. This one which is where I keep all my all my pliers and 
and cutters and, and such. These are crimping pliers for solderless terminals. And technically for you guys out there that do this for a living, no, these are not really supposed to be used on solderless terminals, but uh, this is what I use. Let's talk about the pliers you need to have on hand. There are many different styles, but these are the ones that I use the most, channel locks. Standard pliers, I probably could get by without having these. I, I have used them, I don't know, once or twice in the three years I've been on the road. What I find myself using more than anything are these three, the channel locks, the needle nose, and diagonal cutters. You need a good set of diagonal cutters, or as we call them in the, uh, in the shops, dikes. If you ask a tech for a pair of dikes, he's not gonna even have to think about it. He'll hand you a set that looks something like this. I carry both metric and SAE Allen wrenches. I mostly use the metric set because most Allen sockets are metric these days, but occasionally you're going to run into something where you'll need an SAE size, and that's what this is. An assortment of screwdrivers, of course. Now, we all know these two uh, bits, you know, flat and Phillips, but what you'll see in motorhomes and, and RVs a lot is something called a Robinson bit. It's also known as a square bit. And so you're gonna need a set of Robinson bits if you're gonna be traveling in a motorhome or, or a RV of any kind. Now the way I do that is I have the bits that I put into a socket and, and use it that way. I suppose you could buy Robinson bit drivers like you know a, a screwdriver this size with a Robinson bit. but but uh, I prefer just to have the bits. That way I can put them into any length, that I can make any length I need. Instead of having Allen wrenches, this is another way you can carry all of those sizes. This is a kit again from Harbor Freight. It has Allen bits, it has Phillips bits, Robinson bits, it has Torx bits, it has a little bit of everything. I dropped it so they're scattered all over the place right now. This is a good kit, a good set to, to go pick up at, uh, at Harbor Freight. So the way I would use these bits is I would, I would more, most often, I would still use the socket, but I would be putting them on my impact. This is a quarter inch drive socket because these are all, all quarter inch drive hex shafts. Here's another, I consider it an essential tool if you're, if you're going to travel in an RV. Um, this is a peck clamp tool. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, get shark bites. And if you're okay with leaks, go ahead, get shark bites. I stopped using them a while back, but I remember when I started uh, this life, I, I tried shark bites a couple times, and um, they work. I mean, they wouldn't be selling them if they didn't work. But I'd say maybe 20% of the time you get a leaker and you have to go in there and do it all over again. It's a pain in the, pain in the rear. So I've just shifted to using the real thing, using clamps. And, and it's, it's so much easier and so much faster in the long run because once it's on, it's not going to leak. I've never had one of these leak when I put it in. Um, and what you use, there's a couple of different clamp styles. The ones I use, I'll show you here in a second. I remember I was communicating with friends of ours, Georgette and John, and they had a leak and I was explaining how to fix it. I was talking to Georgette and I said, when you go to the store, they're gonna try and sell you shark bites. Don't get them because the, there's a chance that they'll leak. And uh, so John went to the hardware store, which was quite a drive apparently to get there from, they were camped remotely. He came back and, and uh, put the shark bite in and guess what, it leaked. So he had to go back and, and invest in a clamping tool. And that's the way it works. It, it just, you put this around the, the hose and you just clamp it. I have never had one leak. So this is the clamp before and this is a clamp after clamping. So before, after. And then, I, of course, I carry various fittings, T's, 
pretty much everything you're gonna find on, on your RV is gonna be half inch, which is what size this is. So you only need to carry half inch clamps and various half inch fittings. This would go on the end of a hose that would go on the back, for instance, go on the back of your um, a Nautilus. And it's a, a screw on fitting with a, with a 90. I always have one of these on hand because you just never know when you might need it. Half inch elbows. So this is a super bar or a wonder bar. I've heard it go by different names. It's great to have in, in your tool kit because you can use it to pry molding off if you need to. Um, I use it a lot. I, when I put the mat down and put the spikes in, sometimes the ground is pretty hard and you have to drive them in you know, with a hammer, which of course, you always, you're always gonna need a good hammer. When I, it's time to break camp, you put this thing in there and, and you pry them out of the ground. You could do that with a the, with the claw hammer, of course, but what I'll end up doing sometimes to get them up far enough is, is I will um, put the claw hammer flat and use this as a spacer so, because you, know, you get it started, but it's still stuck in the ground and you need to pull it up further. Uh, so anyway, get a, get, a, get a Wonder Bar if you don't already have one. This is a PVC cutter, but it also cuts PEX tube really well. You want to have one of these. An adjustable end wrench or crescent wrench is a handy thing to have. Vice grips, another tool you'll want in your toolbox. A pair of scissors you don't mind sitting in your toolbox. Now, of course, you're gonna want some sockets. I've got way too many, but again, what I did for a living, I had probably three or four times this number of sockets in my toolboxes at home. These are just the ones that I brought along. You need deep sockets. I use, probably more than anything, I use my quarter inch drive set. Um, you, you have uh, the, again, the SAE sizes and the metric sizes. These, of course, are the deep sockets, quarter inch drive. The only thing I use the half inch drive stuff for are the wheel lugs on both the truck and the trailer and the inch and a sixteenth socket to take the anode rod out of the water heater when I need to change that or when I need to take it out and flush the, the tank because you know get a buildup of sediment in there, lime deposits, and start getting low water pressure. You pull that out, you get a jet tool that you stick in that hole and, and rinse it out until stuff stop, stops coming out. Of course, the various ratchets, 3 8 half inch. The one that I use the most, of course, is my, you can see the 3 8 and half inch are on the bottom tray. The one I use the most is my quarter inch and it's, in, it's on the top tray. Various lengths of extensions from all three sizes, quarter inch, 3 8 and half inch. I would say I use my quarter inch stuff 10 times to, to the other sizes once. You know, 10% of the time I'm using something other than quarter inch drive. So if you, if you just want to start out, just get a good quarter inch drive set. Shallow sockets, deep sockets, extensions, ratchet. And, and you'll be good to go in most instances. This is a uh, nice torture tool. This is for cutting hoses. You put a hose in here and, and close it and nice clean cut. Combination wrenches, this is my metric set, and these are my SAE set. If you're gonna be full-time, you have to have an air compressor. I like this one, this is um, from Harbor Freight. It is uh, maximum 135 PSI, so I could do pretty much anything with it. I use it for more than just airing tires, although that is the main function that I use it for. But I have nailers. This one is a, a, a brad nailer and a staple nailer. And then I've got a pin nailer, which in the RV world, there's lots of stuff that's held on by these tiny little pin, pin nails. These are the pin nails. I mean, you can see how tiny these things are. The pins that I use for this thing are, are 23 gauge, very, very small, and one inch long. That's what I have found works best. It's mainly for the fascias around the window because those have to be able to be removed. I mean, I could put them on so they would never come off, but then if I had to take the, the fascia off to do something, 
which, hap which happens occasionally, I wouldn't be able to. Something I picked up at, at um, Harbor Freight is this little pack of shrink wrap. This stuff is invaluable if you're doing electrical work. And for those of you who don't know what shrink wrap is, this is, you put this over, when you splice wires together, you put this over the splice, apply heat to it and it shrinks over the wire. Better than tape because there's no seams and can't come unwrapped. But I still do carry tape, electrical tape. I've got black and red. You just need a fairly decent uh, DVOM, digital volt ohm meter is what this is. Uh, with, and, and if I clamp this around a wire with current flowing through it, it'll tell me how many amps are flowing through that wire. If you're going to do any electrical diagnosis at all, you have to have a DVOM. Otherwise, you're just guessing. Another tool from my automotive days, this is a power probe, and, and the way this works, you connect this to the positive and this to the negative of a battery, and then it's got a little switch on it, and if I push the top of the switch, I'm sending 12 volts out to whatever I'm putting it to, and if I push the bottom of the switch, I'm sending ground. So this is, this is a very handy um, tool to have when you're diagnosing. It'll also, of course, if you, touch, if you touch a wire, it'll also give you a readout of what's on that wire, whether it's, whether it's uh, hot or a ground. It'll tell you either way. If you don't want to put it on the positive and negative poles of the battery, you can unplug this and plug, plug this in, and now you can plug it into a, a lighter socket. We'll put Amazon links in if you want to buy one of these. So this is an example, example of what you've probably heard of before. This is 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. But amazingly, it all fits. This is my heat gun. It is another Harbor Freight purchase. Uh, I like it because it has a uh, two speed fan and six uh, temperature settings. If you're gonna do electrical work, you need a heat gun. Let us know in the comments, what's your go-to tool in your, in your kit? Uh, I'd love to hear about them. And anything that we may have missed, just let us know in the comments. So how hot do you think a heat gun gets? Let's, do, let's just see.